let's zoom straight on over. So as you can see, it is best layer 04, as I mentioned, a notoriously hard map to attack. The defenders have the huge advantage at the beginning of having this uh, river with only three points of interest that can be crossed, along with the main bridge is the only place that the uh, attacking forces can move across with vehicles. So you can see the 6GA guys now. So just get rid of any confusion at the beginning. 6GA, playing the Germans, they're on the offensive, they have to attack, they're red. Armour Group Adler, they're defending, they're the British forces, they are blue. So they're a 90 second, or was it a 100 second uh, starting phase? So 6GA already at a huge disadvantage, they are locked in this small area and can't advance. Whereas the defending forces over here, you can see it's even. Uh, a couple more members on the 6GA side. Oh no, sorry, this is the airborne. So the... And I'm one caster, so the teams are even. So it'll be 39 versus 38. There might be one extra caster in there. So the teams are equal. But you can see already the defenders have this huge advantage. Their starting phase area don't exist. So the defenders can actually move across the river if they wanted. But it looks uh, it's looking like the armor group Adler guys, they've decided they're not going to move across the river. They're going to hold their side of the river. And uh, this this allows for the 6GA guys a huge advantage because that means they can push out and basically claim their side of the river. I mean, it's still going to be hard for the 6GA guys to move across. So let's just go down. We've got the... It looks like 6GA are making use of everything in their arsenal. They've got MSPs, Logitrucks, trucks. they've even got the motorbike out. Smoke's going out there for the defenders already. Pushing down the road, we've got uh, Fons and Strike in a Tiger 1. Looks like they've only got one Tiger, uh, one tank, if you do at the moment. We've got Rally Points going down. Is this another tank? No, it's an MSP heading up north into the hills. So we can see there's already conflicts going on. It looks like it was smoke from the defenders that went, uh, went out. We've got Reed pushing in here. We've got one defender. Major Divisant. More smokes going out. Is this another thing? Okay, so they have the 222. So there are two uh, tanks, tanks on the field. Making clever use here of the MG, a free MG uh, to help suppress along with the 222. Suppressing the defending forces. We'll move back to the main bridge. So you can see a lot of smoke went out here. This was actually the defender's smoke. So you've got Reed leading his squad there, claiming the uh, bridge building. There is one defender still up nearby. You can see the volume of fire coming in here. They've got the MG on the, uh, the cliff side. They're also using the 222 to try to suppress the defenders as much as possible. It looks like the defenders have actually pushed across the northernmost river crossing, which is just debris, trees, and all that. And they're actually pushing into the hills. So you can see 6GA already under pressure on their own spawning side of the map. As the defending forces, a 39 IR infantry squad by the looks of it, are causing havoc for the 6GA guys. But it does look like the 6GA have caused more casualties to the IR9, uh, the IR, the IR, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting the names confused. The IR guys, because Zoid pushing forward. Zoid and Sovrik going down to a grenade, but also Rudian going down to a grenade. We've got Yablo Yabloski from 6GA moving around. There are a couple of defenders still alive. Rensky's gone down there. Oh, they're, they're, apparently there's two Ren Rensnicks. So the 6GA already under pressure on their side of the map. We can see the Tiger has pushed closer to the bridge. The allies don't have tanks sword yet. It's going to take the allies a little while to get their tank sword. You can, in fact, you can see there's a Sherman has just arrived at the battle. It looks like it's a one-man Sherman. Sherman has just arrived at the battle. Sherman's going to be ineffective against the Tiger at a frontal, uh, frontal conflict, though, so... 
the Sherman will have to be careful, but the Sherman putting smoke down range. Looks like the defenders are using a tactic where they're blinding the attackers so they can't push forward. We've got a very well camouflaged. Look at this AT gun camouflage here by Wibble Wind. Very, uh, very good place for it. It can shoot directly across the river and it'll be able to hit any tanks, any vehicles that push up that main road. So, good spot here for the AT gun. What do we have over here? Is this just a sniper? This might be a sniper or just a lone rifleman of some kind. Yep, it is a sniper. Sniper holding this uh, pontoon here. The attackers have to build this pontoon. So you can see the pontoon is getting pinned by a sniper and also defenders mortars coming in, forcing the uh, 6J guys to back away from the pontoon, unable to build it. The tiger has taken a lot of damage. Tiger probably getting hit by the AT gun, reversing now, trying to get away, probably going for a repair. But this, this is the difficulty of best 04. If I look at the times, it was only a 45 minute time limit to get the first capture zone. And already you can see how hard it is for the attackers on this map to push across. We've got the 6J guys now. It looks like they have managed to push back the defenders. There are a couple of defenders still alive though. You can see a rally point here for the uh, defenders. So let's just quickly talk about the tactics uh, used by the defending team at the moment. So the defending team, the Armour Ab Group guys. Let me just pronounce that again. Armour Group Adler guys. What they did, they sent, it looks like a squad across the Northern Crossing. So they pushed across the Northern Crossing with a full squad to hold back the attackers. On the central bridge, they threw smoke across to blind the attackers, forcing the attackers to slow their engagement and they can't push across. Along with having an AT gun that has been destroyed by a Stuka. That's what that Stuka was for. They just destroyed this AT gun. So with the smokes on the AT gun, they used that to block the main bridge. And then on the southern pontoon that has yet to be built up, they have a sniper who is probably helping the mortar team call down constant mortar fire onto the northern uh, onto the summon pontoon and look how accurate this mortifier is this mortifier is you can tell this mortifier has been practiced constantly by the armor group adler guys this mortifier is so accurate it's dead on to the dead on the spot where the 60 year guys need to build very well practiced mortifier there from the armor group adler we'll go back over to the northern uh, crossing now because it looks like the 60 a They've taken a lot of casualties, but they are slowly pushing the Armour Group Adler guys back. We've got a house team moving forward, going for a revive. They have pushed them almost all the way back to the river though, and they did destroy that rally. So it looks like they have created another rally down on the riverbank. So the IR squad not giving up on the northern crossing yet. They've placed out a second rally and they're still delaying the 6GA push. See Schwausen's moving forward. Baker just behind him. I've played against and with these guys quite a bit. Very good infantry. Securing the... Uh, raised building near the northern crossing. We'll just go back to the center bridge now. That mortifier, is, look how accurate that mortifier is. It's just constant mortifier coming down on that. That southern pontoon crossing. Your Reed, his squad is pinned down in the bridge. The bridge building, unable to push across. You can see the IR guys, or Armour Group Adler guys, should I say. Very clever, they built a small sandbag fortification on the bridge, meaning any tank, any vehicle that tries to cross this bridge is going to be delayed by that sandbag. They could try, drive over it. Very risky though, the tank could get stuck, possibly even fall off the bridge. 
So very, very good use of game mechanics there by uh, Armour Group Adler. We've got Baker and Cook and Roth Coix now all pushing forward, trying to secure the river crossing as more 6GA guys try to push through these trees and push the IR squad back onto their side of the river. We'll just zoom over here because I believe this is actually a tank. So we've got the 91st Panzer Division squad with a Firefly. Look how well this Firefly is positioned. If I just get rid of the nameplates, look at the view of this Firefly. So there is a Stuka coming in. Is the Stuka on the Firefly? Ooh, very good awareness by the uh, 91 Panzer Division there. They knew that Stuka could possibly on them. Almost destroying the Firefly. Look how low health that Firefly is now. Very good awareness by the Armour Group Adler there to move the Firefly back, avoiding the uh, Stuka there. Moving back to the uh, the central river cross. And it looks like Boring managed to get across the bridge. Unfortunately, he just went down. I don't know how he managed to get across the bridge. Uh, Spitfire's coming in. Spitfire Strafe coming in on the main bridge. We'll go back to the southern crossing now. You can see the Armour Group Adler guys, that mortar has not ceased fire. That mortar has constant fire. If I was the 6GA guys at this point, I might even give, give up on the Southern Crossing. That mortar is just constant on point. Not only that, but they have a second mortar team firing a little further back. You can see there's one mortar focused on the pontoon. And there's one mortar firing a little further back, getting a lot of kills. Hope just going down there. Uh, Squidrick going down. The Germans, the 6GA, have built an 88, but the 88 is just under fire from the mortar. They can't use the 88 because of the, of the uh, concentrated mortar fire going on down here. So it looks like 6GA have halted their push on the central bridge at the moment. Oh, the tiger just went down. I'm not sure how the tiger went down. Uh, sorry, not the tiger. The firefly. So the firefly has just been destroyed. I'm not quite sure how the firefly got destroyed. I did miss that. Oh, is that the tiger? That might be the tiger. It is. So it looks like the tiger that was trying to push the main bridge has crept through the forest in the, uh, in the north, which is very hard to do. And he's taken out the Firefly, but the Tiger has to watch out. There is infantry on his side of the river. So, adapting to the situation there. Six J adapting to the situation, pulling their heavy armor up to the north and trying to focus on pushing the north. You can see artillery going in on the cap now, along with the Tiger firing uh, HE onto cap. We'll just go on Rudin here. Rudin is flanking the Tiger. He might be a Pioneer or an AG guy. The Commander was outside. The Commander spotted. Spotted. Yep, and just like that. Very good awareness by the tank crew there. The Commander of the tank crew fully aware that there's a... Uh, a Pioneer trying to sneak up on the Tiger. Great awareness there. Killing the Pioneer. But you can see the IR infantry squad still holding this side of the river. They are dug in and the 6GA guys are now being hit by mortars on this part of the map as well. You know what? We're going to go find their mortar team. Because the mortar team from, from the uh, armor group Adler has just been immense. The sheer accuracy of their mortars have been incredible. So let's see what mortars they are rocking. So as you can see, they've got three mortars firing at the moment. They've got one firing on the Northern Crossing. And I suspect they've got two firing, as I said, on the Southern Crossing. And they have someone helping organize and coordinate, communicating how accurate these mortars are. So a very well organized mortar team here. Who do we have? We have, so it's a 7 ID along with 139 IR rocking the, uh, the mortar team here. We've got Kamachi, Bada, Nubi Nubai, and Squaggle controlling the mortars. We can see a second Firefly pushing down now, pushing down the main road, trying to get to the battle. We'll see where this Firefly goes. We'll just be on board this Firefly for a little while to see where he uh, locates. So 
So, so far, you got to say, this is a, an incredibly well-organized defense so far. And this is something me and Wabbit spoke about uh, in the, our interview a few days ago. We, we made mention that whatever team employs the best mortars will have a huge advantage going forward. And you've got to say, so far, Armor Group Adler, their use of mortars has been impeccable. Probably one of the best use of mortars we've seen so far in this tournament. We'll go back on board now. You can see the volume of fire coming in from 6GA now. They're just trying to batter the central central push. They've got the 222 firing. They've got MGs firing. They've got, they've got an ATA. They've got their own free four-man mortar team firing. With the motorbike there as well. Also firing. They're just sending a sheer volume of fire into the defending forces now. Probably frustrated. They're just trying to pound the armor group Adler defenders out of point. The sheer amount of volume of fire coming down now. We'll go back on board the Tiger. So it looks like a IR-9 soldier tried to flank and take out the Tiger again, but he did minimal damage on the Tiger. The Tiger is still in good health. You can see the Firefly moving back into its old position. But again, the IR squad that is holding the Northern Crossing, doing a great job. Once again, they've pushed back the 6GA attackers, probably communicating with their mortar team, asking the mortar team to help support them. And the 6GA guys have been pushed back again. We're going back to the center now. There's a uh, a push on the central bridge. The 68 guys tried to push the central bridge, but it looks like they got uh, bombarded by not only more fire, but also MG5 returning from the defenders. I'm curious to see if this Tiger is going to engage the Firefly. Let's just go and board the Tiger for a second. You can see one shot coming in from the Firefly already, as I said. One shot returning, missed from the Tiger. Yeah. The Tiger trying to do indirect fire. The Firefly missing his second shot. The commander of the tank outside trying his best to uh, direct the gunner. Both tanks are firing blind through bushes and trees. Set, uh, third shot from the Tiger missing. And then the Firefly missing as well. But the, the Tiger knows it's now being flanked. Great. Great organization again there from the Tiger. Aware that he's going to get flanked by infantry. Didn't manage to take out the infantry though. And there goes a AT grenade pushing the Tiger back. The Tiger is actually less than ooh, close to dying now. And I think his engine just got destroyed. Yes, his engine is now very close to going down. And there goes the Tiger. So good work there from Rudin and Wisnix who managed to take down that Tiger. We'll just zoom on over to the Firefly. I don't think the Firefly sustained any damage. I'm pretty sure the Firefly is still in good shape. Yet the Firefly by Loki, Mr. Blonde, and Yule 31 still uh, in good shape. Didn't take any damage. Very unlucky by the Tiger team there. Tiger team could have done with some infantry support. Maybe just one infantry uh, soldier nearby to help defend him. But you can see IR, uh, the IR guys, again, they've pushed uh, 6GA back into the tree line. So the 39 IR infantry squad in the north pushing the 6GA offensive back into the tree line. You can see the central bridge is still hold. There is a uh, smoke barrage going down now. I would suspect that's a German smoke barrage. We'll just look at the tickets quickly. So despite not being able to push across the bridge, the German attackers are currently in the lead when it comes to tickets. But as you can see, there's only 25 minutes left in the game. Already 20 minutes have gone. And I don't think they're ever going to cross this bridge. I think they need to just give up on the Southern Pontoon. I think they just need to give up on the Southern Pontoon. I don't see any. I don't see the 6GA guys getting across that Southern Pontoon. Throughout the entirety of the match... One mortar, one mortar has concentrated solely on blocking the construction of that pontoon. 
We've got an MSP going forward. It'll be interesting to see what... Oh, no, this is a transport vehicle. Transport vehicle maybe trying to rush across the bridge from Scott and Reed. And there it goes down. Probably mines. I'm going to guess he got hit by mines on the bridge. Maybe a frustrating transport vehicle there. Just trying to get across the bridge. I mean, in a way, it does help the 6GA guys. They do now have hard cover on the bridge. So they might be able to push forward a little bit. Now there's that truck being destroyed. We've got a second heavy Tiger. A Tiger 1 coming out for 6GA. Operated by Strike. Uh, Shiflet, and I can't see the other names. Just seeing if I can spot them. Gourlay, Strike, Fonz, and Shiflet pushing the central bridge. There is still a Sherman. You can see that Sherman is now being two-manned. Still holding the central uh, bridge. And the Tiger shot going out, just missing the Sherman, though. The Tiger knows the Sherman is there. Tiger hasn't moved yet. Good hit by the Sherman on the Tiger there. We'll see if he'll be able to finish off this Sherman. I think the Sherman's engine went out. Another good hit there. One more hit and the Sherman's going to, uh, going to go down. The Sherman is moving. Can the Tiger hit it with this last shot? I think it's not going to be able to. No, it's not going to be able to get the last shot on the Sherman. So the Sherman surviving. Boy, he's going to have to go back and get repaired. Good work by the Tiger there. Good work by the Tiger there. Pushing the Sherman back. Meaning the infantry uh, could maybe have a greater chance pushing across the central bridge. That Sherman was focused purely on barding the central bridge and making sure no one could cross the central bridge. We'll go back onto the northern crossing now. You can see the IR uh, infantry squad pushed the 6GA guys all the way back into the forest. And Charlotte goes down. But he did manage to take out the rally for the IR infantry squad. He did manage to take down the uh, rally for the IR infantry squad. So this could be an opportunity for the 60 year guys to push forward while there is no rally. Are they going to place down a new rally? I'm going to guess they're going to focus on placing down a new rally as quick as possible. So they don't lose their, uh, they don't lose their advantage of having a hard spawn on the attacker side of the river. God, I, I, how did Winnex manage to sneak up on the Tiger again? This guy has been an absolute ninja for the armor group Adler guys. Managed to somehow sneak up on the Tiger and do a little bit of damage to the Tiger by the looks of it. We've got the 2 2 2 firing again. Again, it's just an exchange of volume of fire at this point. The defenders have got a one ticket lead now. But as this match stands with 20 minutes left, I honestly don't see the attackers being able to push across this river. I, I, I don't see it happening. The armor group Adler, credit to their mortar team, has just been so, so accurate and devastating to the attacking German forces. I just don't see them being able to get across the river. You've got to say, it's been a valiant effort by the 6GA guys so far. They've tried to adapt to the situation. They've tried to push every crossing. They've used tactics. But this mortar crew from the armor group Adler guys, full credit to them. Full credit to them. They've done an immense job holding back the offensive. Uh, the IR guys now. We'll go back to the IR guys. It looks like the IR infantry squad, there's only two of them left alive on the northern crossing. Ever since they lost their rally point. So the 6GA guys might be able to finally push to these buildings. And maybe get across the river. I really do want to see this match carry on. I, I don't want to see it end on the first cap. I want to see this match carry on. But as it stands, it's going to be hard for the uh, 
six GA guys to do it. There is a second tank out now. So they have got a P3. P3 now helping uh, rain down suppressive fire onto the arm group Adler guys. And they have cleared out the uh, infantry, the sniper. A Stuka going in now. You can actually see the armor group Adler's actually smoked the P3. A Stuka going out on the sniper there that was holding the hill. I love how the armor group Adler have actually used smokes as a offensive weapon in this game. They've used them to blind 6GA so they can push forward and also blind the offensive of 6GA. So great use of smoke, not only personal smokes like the infantry carry, but also the commander asset smokes. See the 6GA guys now, they have pushed forward to the first building of the Northern Crossing. It's actually a dead vehicle there. I, I'm not quite sure how this vehicle got hit. What is that? Is that a Sherman or is it a, lo a logistics truck? It is a logistics truck. I'm going to assume that the Tiger sniped it all the way down the road. But you can see. 6GA, again, at this point, they're just volume of fire. They are just firing. They are bombarding anything they have. MGs, tanks, mortars, AT placements, small caliber uh, tanks. They are firing everything they have to try blast the defenders off the point. You can see, I've, you can see all the infantry from 6GA getting ready to make a push across the bridge, uh, bridge and here comes a push right here we'll see if they manage to get it across there goes one so zoid managing to get in some cover here king and swarak managing to get in some cover here i think this is the furthest anyone has actually made it so far on the attacking team king moving in now again the volume of fire going out here the 6GA guys have got to rally down in the uh, first building on the northern approach. Zoid move forward. Are they going to try to place a rally? I think Zoid is squad leader and King is his radio man. So they might try to place a rally on this side of the river. You can see a second infantry push going down now. Uh, the Sherman. The Sherman tank from the defenders. Blind in the Tiger. HE coming down from the Sherman. This Tiger needs to get rid of that Sherman. If the, if the Tiger can remove the Sherman, this might be their best opportunity to get across the bridge and secure a fall. A good strafe going out there, managing to get a kill on the tank commander. So you can see one shot managed to hit the, tiger, uh, the Sherman there. The Sherman's not even trying to do damage to the Tiger. The Sherman knows it can't damage the Tiger. All the Sherman is doing is blinding the Tiger. So the Sherman has taken two big hits. The Sherman needs to retreat once again. The third shot from the Tiger just missing. But did you see how the Sherman very, very cleverly didn't try to do damage to the Tiger? He knew he wasn't going to be able to do damage to the Tiger. What he did, he put smoke in the face of the Tiger. He tried to blind the Tiger and kill the infantry for as long as possible. So you can see the P3 moving forward. You can see, meanwhile, while that uh, second infantry push on the main bridge happened, the 6GA guys have pushed down to the closest building to the northern crossing. So 6GA doing everything in their power at this point to just try to secure a spawn. You can see the commander assets now coming in from the Adler guys, armor group Adler, calling artillery down on the bridge, wiping out two squads of 6G8 infantry. And then a Spitfire as well, just to make measures meet. So that was a great push there by 6G8. But again, this map, just the choke points, it's so hard to get across. Great attempt there. They are still pushing in the north now, so we'll head over to the north. We've got the P3 in the north, trying to help the infantry here get across the river. On board the defenders will get down a little bit low. So on board Blitzer here, you can see this Bren uh, MG placement. Look at this placement here. 
you've got to ask, how are the attackers going to get across this bridge? How are the attackers going to get across this bridge at this point? A great MG placement here. Yeah, but that was Blitzer on the MG placement there. I mean, Scott and Boring in the... I believe this is a Panzer free. You can correct me after if I'm wrong, but I do believe this is a Panzer free. Doing its best to try and kill the defenders who have um, hunkered down on their MGs. We'll zoom back to the center of the map, so... You can see the volume of fire coming in there again. The Tiger... Along with the 2-2, two -two, trying to bombard the point. There is only 14 minutes left in the game. The attackers do have the advantage of tickets. They are ahead by eight tickets. The mortars on the summon and pontoon still coming in. Those mortars haven't relented on the summon pontoon. Unable to get infantry on it to build the summon pontoon. Oh, we might have... Uh, the first crossing in the north. We do. We have Baker. Baker managing to cross the river in the north. Doing his best to move forward. Using smokes. Using grenades. He did actually take out a couple of uh, German... Uh, sorry, British defenders here. And I think the P3 just got hit. Yep. Another commander asset coming in. A bombing run from the defenders. Taking out the P3 and also wiping out a lot of infantry here with it. Still, the rally point is up. But look at all the dead. Look at all the dead uh, infantry here. And again, these mortars have not relented. This entire game, Armour Group Adler, mortars firing non-stop. Non-stop those mortars have been firing. So we've got the Tiger on the main, uh, the main bridge, just trying to do its best to put shots down range. The defender, uh, the attackers now down on tickets. Yeah, look, at the, look at these mortars. Just constant mortars coming in. We've got Zoid tried to make it across the bridge, but I believe he went down. Yep, Zoid has gone down. Is that actually a... Is Miko or Mi Milo actually alive? Milo is actually alive. We've got a defender here with a stink. Milo actually on the attacker side of the river. Baker has flanked the other way that round. Baker might be trying to get a kill on the Firefly. 6GA once again trying to push forward, trying to make it across. We've got a push in the center, center of the bridge now. But again, look, the mortar fires immediately. Mortar fires shifting straight to the central bridge immediately. The moment 6GA tried to approach. Oh, meantime, meantime, the, the southern pontoon has been built. And 6GA have managed to get across the southern pontoon, but it looks like Limic. Limit, I'm gonna guess, has a, a gamma bomb. We'll take out the pontoon here. Or some kind of HE. Is he gonna try to uh, deconstruct it with his. So then, you can actually see he placed AP mines on the bridge. But, the 6GA, uh, Birch Grog, Laz Lawson, they have placed down a rally. But you can see immediately, immediately, Armour Group Adler with the UBA clan moving to secure the pontoon as fast as possible. Meanwhile, in the center, we have seen uh, Reed lead his squad across the river. Again, doing their best. There is only 10 minutes left. And I've got to say, time, time is running out here for 6GA. They still need to get on cap, which is in the center of this forest. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of work for them. We'll just get on Baker here. Baker's sneaking up on the Firefly. The commander of the tank is out. He has spotted the commander. They haven't spotted him yet. Baker backing away. You see the, the push in the south. 
It looks like the 6J were found in the south. They're being pushed back. There is still a couple of soldiers left in the center from 6GA. So a couple of infantrymen left. Baker looks like he's deciding against taking this firefly out. Not sure why. Send back back south now. Let's see. Infantry from the armor group outlook pushing into the northern forest again. 68 lost the northern forest. They did secure the two buildings. But it looks like they're being pushed back. Uh, in the south, they did manage to get a new rally down. Now, you can see there is a bit of a push coming in from the south pontoon. There is a bit of a push coming in. One ski moving in. But I think he's going to get gunned down here. Getting one kill. Getting two kills. Can he take out the rally? Did he hear the rally? Getting a third kill. Yeah, Blunsky there. Great work with his K9. Managing to take out three defenders. Going for the revive on Anderson. Great work there. Great work there by Yablinski. Managing to take out three defenders with a K9. Great play there by him. Looks like Baker... Baker did approach the Firefly. It looks like he did try to take it out. He has done damage to the Firefly. He killed the commander. Baker is still alive. And the Firefly is heavily damaged. And there goes the Firefly. Great work by Baker. I'm going to assume that was Baker placing a bomb on the Firefly. So Baker doing great work there. And he's still flanking around the defenders. Maybe looking for an MSP. In fact, he might find the MSP here. The trouble is, once Baker moves near this MSP, the defenders are going to know Baker is still alive. And he has. He's located the MSP. Has he located the MSP? Is he going to see it? I hope, he's, I hope he has seen it. He has. Baker has located the MSP. He can't destroy it, but if the Germans have a Stuka, he could call a Stuka in on the MSP, and then the defenders have lost a um, mal, uh, mobile spawn point. There is only seven minutes left, though. You've got to say there's a lot of work 68 need to do in these seven minutes. There is a huge infantry push coming in here, though. Look. They have managed to secure the southern central island. They have left Dodo alive. Dodo might find their rallies. There is a rally hidden over there. But a big push coming in here from the, from the south... Baker marked the MSP and Baker's now moved away from the MSP. There's a small push coming in from the north. We got... I don't know how this happened. Uh, so at some point... Shao Sen... I, I, I can't pronounce your name, my dude. You need a new name. But he has somehow managed to sneak onto the cap point. And he might be able to take out a few rallies if he's lucky. So you, you can see the big infantry push coming in here, here from 6GA. For some reason, I got a notification saying I need resources. Interesting. But you can see, with only six minutes left, I think 6GA might have given up on the cap at this point. And they might just be looking to find the Mordzi. I think this has become personal. I think Zoid, Yablinski, and Shaw, and King... I think this is personal at this point. They're looking for that mortar team. They're going out to get revenge. They know who's halted them this game. They know who's been causing them the issues this game. And it looks like they're going to get sweet revenge on the mortar team. We've got Baker also. Baker doing a solid snake move here. Sneaking into the church on his own. It looks like he's wanting to get personal revenge against the mortar team. You do have Brawler and Mac Bean getting close to the capture burn as well. We're going to go on board Baker. Looks like Baker's heard the mortar team and Baker's moving in for the kill. But we'll go on Baker here. Baker looking to get revenge here. He is moving in. He can hear the mortars. He's out for revenge here. Oh, Zoid getting the kill on the uh, mortar... The mortar uh, squad leader then. Take it down, newbie noob. Then Comanche and Blender getting flank, uh, flanked from behind. I mean, give it to 6GA. I think I think that's going to satisfy them. I mean, the, I, it'll be incredible if they can get the cap within the next five minutes. But I think for them, simply wiping out that mortar team has got to be satisfying. I know if I was 6GA, 
at this point, at least I could take that away. I would be very satisfied with getting the kill on the more team. So 68, they've got five minutes left. Can they get the cap within the next five minutes? They have managed to secure the central bridge, the southern bridge, and it looks like they're also trying to push across the northern crossing. Uh, they've got four minutes to get on cap and start neutralizing the cap. You can also see the tiger is firing on the Hellcat, I believe. The Hellcat's engine is out. Will the tiger finish off the Hellcat? And there goes the Hellcat. The Hellcat has now been destroyed. 6GA, they've got four minutes, four minutes to get onto the capture point. This is incredible by 6GA here. Incredible. If they can get onto the capture zone, manage to secure the capture zone, this will be incredible by them. You can see them rushing forward now. They've only got minutes left. Minutes left. Lots of IR infantry going down here. Lots of IR infantry as Zoid and King and Shaw uh, move in. Brawler moving in as well. The immense fire coming in from the 6GA guys here. They've got the Tiger, they've got the 2-2, two -two, they've got the MGs firing across the river. Fobbington and Fort securing the central bridge. Lemon and Rosberg moving up from the south as well. We've got Reed and Thunder along with Roth, Cook and Seb trying to secure the northern crossing. Scott has moved in. Scott is on the cap. Scott getting a couple of kills here. We're going forward. Scott is actually a tank commander at this point. He's left his tiger. He's fed up himself. He's got frustrated. He's going out with an MG and he's managed to secure himself a lot of kills there on cap. This is coming down to the wire now for 6GA. They have three minutes. Three minutes to get on cap and try to secure this account. This is incredible. Coming down to the last few seconds here. The last rolls of the dice here. It looks like Vod. Vod Milo. Has he gone down? Is he holding the bridge? Hard to see. No, nope, I think he's actually dead. So they do actually have the northern crossing as well. I don't think they have started neutralizing yet. No, the, the flag, the capture zone is still in the defender's favor. We've got Reed, Thunder going down there. Unfortunately, Mitten's going down as well. Looks like Scott. Scott also went down. 2.45 left. McBean. Grimes moving forward. King. Looks like gone down. The Tiger getting a few extra kills here at the end. Looks like Baker is literally sitting on top of the mortars at this point, And Baker is making sure no one gets on those mortars. We've got the UBA guys here. Strafes coming in now. I'm going to assume those are German strafes. They're throwing everything they can at the capture zone. But I think it's going to be just not enough. There's too much infantry here for the 6GA guys to clear out. I do hear artillery coming in. There is a big infantry push coming here with Fomitan, Lemon, Shorvix, and Forts, and Seb, and Thunder. Basically, everyone is rushing forward now to try to get on this cap zone. Zolvi, Saw, Rem, Zoid rushing across the Northern Crossing. A Stuka coming in. Stuka missing its target. Would have been great to get a Stuka here on the center. They could have got a lot of kills here on the center. 1 minute 48 left. You can see the 68 throwing all their infantry forward, doing their best, placing forward rallies. Strafe's coming in now from the defenders. Strafe's coming in from the defenders. And I think that is going to be game. We've got GDs from both sides. I don't think there's going to be enough time left. I don't think there's going to be enough time left for the attackers. One minute left, and you've got to say, credit to both teams this game. Huge credit to both teams. Arm Group Adler, their mortar team, incredible. Maybe the best and most practiced mortar teams we've seen yet in this tournament. Their mortar team was immense. Incredible job by Arm Group Adler. But then likewise to 6GA. It's a hard map to attack on. And they did manage to get across the river. They adapted where they could. They threw everything they could against Arm Group Adler. And you got to say, if this match went on for another 10 minutes, 6GA might have been able to secure that first cap. If this uh, match went on for another 10 minutes, they could have made, potentially got the first cap. Incredible work there, though. Incredible work from both sides. I'm interested to... Um, it's going to be good talking to both uh, teams afterwards in the post-match interview. So don't go anywhere.
I'm going to close the stream and go live again with no delay. So do not go anywhere. We're going to do a post-match interview with a member from both teams. We're going to ask them questions about how the match went. We're going to analyze it afterward. This was incredible. I'm going to end the stream now. I'll see you all in half an hour when there's no delay. Don't go anywhere. What an incredible game. We've got so much to talk about.